Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Acres. The past three days have been a whirlwind. <laughs> Seriously. Hi, Maureen. He's Henry. That's Rufus. <laughs> you can't see Rufus. He's out of camera view. That's right. He's busy scratching, so you'll hear him jingle instead. Things started off with uh, me volunteering to be an ultrasound dummy. Yeah, on Friday. That was fun. I tore a bicep tendon, and it's completely torn. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any images inside the doctor's facility because the lights were off and the light levels were just too low. It just wasn't working. So, I'll tell you about... That was a big shake. Yes. <laughs> Sadly, the mobile station where we've been receiving packages for about 14 years is no more. Mm -hmm. Now we started off, you know, it's interesting because as Irene was just saying, when you live in a small town or in a small environment, your options are limited. Yeah, when we first moved here, uh, there was a lady in town named Elizabeth who had a small business. She did herbs and natural honey and some other stuff like that. She had a masseuse who was in there. Actually, the, it was a licensed physical therapist who came in right. uh, once a, a, a Physical therapist? It was physical therapist. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Physical therapist, One of those yeah. things. Licensed, anyway, who came in to do stuff locally a couple times a week. She was a great person. She mm -hmm. had great hours. She took both mail and packages for right. people who signed up to use her service. In fact, for, for many years, well, not that many years, mm -hmm. for only a few years, we used her service. Right. And we always used to give her a buck anytime we could to, for picking up the packages, you know, because you could, UPS and FedEx and anybody else could deliver to her place. She kept them in a secure back room. You had to sign for them, all that sort of stuff. So you were very comfortable with having your packages delivered there. And then her husband emptied their bank account and split and she lost the business. Now, there is no choice for her because she had no financial resources. The town is too small, really, to reach out and support somebody like that, no matter how important they are. And so right. that building was eventually sold, mm -hmm. and it became, once again, a, a residence. residence. Yeah, because it was just a converted house. And she used the part that had originally been probably an added-on porch that had been enclosed, probably a screen porch originally, then enclosed, and that part was the part that she ran her little shop in, and then part of the actual house part she was using for uh, the rest of the business. So I called Irene and said, um, we have a problem. Right. Well, when Elizabeth went away, Henry was over at the mobile station ch uh, talking to the then owner, Roy, and he said, geez, I don't know what we're going to do. We used to get our packages delivered to Elizabeth's place, but Elizabeth's gone out of business. And he said, oh, well, we take packages, too. Which was great because they're open 6 in the morning to 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Right. It's so there's, on the way to the post office, yeah. so it makes it an eat, or at least it made it an a easy A very pickup. easy thing. And then uh, after a few years, he sold it. And there were some concerns when it was sold that we might have issues again. And the new owner was a little bit iffy at first about, well, I don't know, if I remember, but okay, you know, and we'll see how much of a pain in the butt it is. And all he was really concerned that people might be leaving packages for weeks on end, and, and nobody here does that really. No, because you need the stuff. You need the stuff now. There's very few people who are just doing some luxury item that they can live without. It's usually parts for something you're trying to fix. So, but that worked out fine. And... That became like a little special spot. I mean, first of all, as, as locals, we got a small discount on a gasoline there. What was it? Five cents? It's five cents a gallon. Five cents a gallon discount. Nothing to sneeze at. Hey, you know, five gallons, you've saved 50 cents. Not enough to buy a soda anymore, but... A quarter. Uh, a quarter, rather. Not enough to buy a soda anymore. Was in the old days. <laughs> a long time ago. A long old, time ago. Days. But um, it, was, it all adds up. And uh, in addition to... It's where I used to get the tires fixed if I had yeah. a nail in it. And a lot of little things like yeah, that. Yeah, because we, we, we knew... Well, first he had a bunch of mechanics. And when Roy had mechanics and stuff there, then when Brian took it over, they kind of downsized it to like oil changes and some stuff like and that. And tires. A huge amount of tire stuff. All the locals who had 
trucks and stuff that were always getting punctures and tires because of the crappy roads. And tractors and yeah. every, every kind of equipment. Would bring in the equipment there and get the tires repaired and all that kind of stuff. They did sell some tires. They also sold some basics like oils and things like that, transmission fluids and stuff. And so we regularly got tires repaired there. The thing that Henry will probably miss the most, well, two, a couple of things actually, is the fact that it had the best soda machine in town. You pop the top and you'd get a little skim of ice. Right, the they kept it cold enough. In the neck enough. of the bottle. Yeah, they kept it cold enough that you could actually get ice crystals form in your, in your drink, which is my idea of how cold a soda should be. Well, it was another thing where I'd go in and pick up packages, and whenever I picked up a package, I bought a soda because it was just a way of Same giving thing. back to that business. Yeah, and also they would take our trash. A buck a bag. A buck a bag for trash in their dumpster because they weren't filling it themselves. And we don't produce that much trash. No. But now I have a problem. Where we live, you have a choice. You can go, is it 12 miles north of town? Over, you go up to... Up to 18 miles to Williams, right. 26 miles to Seligman, yeah. 28 miles to Paulden. Right. So the closest one is actually Williams, which is a different county. That's fine. I don't care what county I'm giving my they money to. They just charge me more when I use their facility. Right. But they, they, every time we turn around, the price had gone up, so we never got away for less than $7 for one or two bags of trash. We were recycling everything we could. But they didn't, they didn't recycle anything there except for glass. Yeah, so the idea that you're going to recycle anything here was... A joke. It, it, it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we were used to, when we lived places like California and Massachusetts, we were used to having, at the time we had four people in the house, two teenagers and the two of us, plus a dog and a cat, and a thousand and one teenagers that mowed through on a regular basis... And we would put out about a half a garbage can of trash a week, and everything else was recyclable. Grass clippings, tree clippings, that, that was one stack, cardboard, clean cardboard, glass, plastic. And we were used to that. Separate it all out, recycle it all. And that meant that we had the lowest possible bill for trash. And when we moved here, we were horrified to find out we couldn't recycle anything. In fact, when we first moved here, you couldn't even recycle glass because right. they didn't have a way of handling it. And, and even then, once they started recycling glass, they had you drive in and get weighed, and then you could dump your glass, and then you get weighed again. So you paid for the glass, you too. You paid for the glass, even though were they were making money off of it. It was nice being able to dump our trash just when we drove into town to get to the post office. It's, it was really convenient because... It's a nine-mile drive to the post office. The mobile station is about a mile from the post office, so I could stop and dump trash, pick up packages, go to the post office, mail the packages for our means business. It just made life a lot easier, a lot more cost-effective, because I didn't need to drive another hour going to any place. Right. Because by the time all is said and done, it's an hour to go to Williams. It's an hour to go to Paul. It's an hour to go to Seligman. Yeah. I spent enough time on the road anyway. Yeah, so now we're sitting here going, okay, going <laughs> I spent hours. Um, when, we, when Henry t texted me and said, oh, the gas station's gone. The problem is that that was our central location for receiving packages. Mm -hmm. And once that was gone, we had a problem. The problem was we had packages on the way. in transit between <laughs> the various locations. It was actually one that was here. supposed to be delivered on Friday. You know, so Henry went across the street to the convenience store and asked them, because I said, I think they take packages too. And they do. Uh, we're just going to see whether we're comfortable with it or not, because we were comfortable. We, for, we knew everybody who worked at the mobile station. We totally knew them. And they never would have allowed somebody to randomly come in and take one of our packages. We don't know how tight the other place is going to be about packages. Well, that's one of the things we liked about Elizabeth too. You had to sign the stuff out. And... Some of the stuff we get is expensive. I buy jewelry supplies. You know, if I get silver in or something like that, I don't want it just thrown around randomly. So we're looking at that as a problem. I spent hours on Friday trying to figure out how I could reroute my packages. 
So I went to Flagstaff. I was on the road and in the doctor's office for about seven hours mm -hmm. on Friday afternoon and early evening, actually late morning, early evening. Mm -hmm. And I figured by the time I got home, Irene might have been able to catch half of our packages. I actually sat down and thought about everything we had, had on order now or in the future and <coughs> how it was being shipped. Some of our packages come from UPS. Some of our packages come from FedEx. Some of the po packages come into the post office. And unfortunately, and this is something sort of weird about this, and I'm sure it has to do with contracts and expenses and stuff like that, or maybe reliability. Maybe they found the post office was not as reliable as they'd like it to be. Some of the companies we use will not ship to the post office. Will not. Plain English, will not. So anything that can ship to the post office, I will switch over to the post office. Some of the things turned out to already be coming to the post office, so that solves that problem. And, and it was, I had my whole, I had all my information and I, had, I found out that after spending an obscene amount of time on the FedEx website and the UPS website, I found out that despite the fact that they were my packages and I had the tracking numbers, I was not allowed to do anything to the routing on them. Even if I signed up for this, that, and the other thing through those two organizations, I had to contact the individual shippers and have them contact the service. So all of this is a complication. <laughs> it, it, it's stuff we didn't want to do, stuff we didn't need to do, stuff we really don't have the time to do, but it had to get done. Yeah, so I, I did it, and it was humorous in a sort of sad way to call people and say, I have an unusual circumstance. I have a package that's in route, and the building it's supposed to be delivered to burned down last night. <laughs> So it burned to the ground. Yeah, well, it didn't burn to the ground. It has concrete walls, so it didn't completely yeah, go to the ground. Yeah, but you can see that some of the stuff is bent. So that means that it actually was hot enough to uh, bend the beams, which are steel. So yeah, uh, mm, yeah, not likely to be rebuilt. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the concrete has been damaged enough that they just have to bulldoze it because the it, fire weakens concrete usually. Anyway, so I had to contact all these people and say, okay reroute it to the convenience store across the street, which has got a number like it make it sound like it's on the other end of the world, but it's just across the street. They must count down one side and then back up the other or something. I don't know. I was a little nervous when he told me what the number was. I was like, okay, I hope that's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see next coming week if it's right or not, because I have like four different things coming in. So we'll let you know. Yeah, and then uh, and they're important because I have deadlines that I'm trying to make for a business thing. And then there's other things that the next time I order, I have to remember to tell them to ship it someplace else. <laughs> so other than that, we're not, we haven't been doing anything. Not a single years. thing. Not a single thing. So, yeah, it's, uh, it was one of those things. I mean, you don't think about it. You live in suburbia all your life. I mean, when we lived in Virginia, they had rural mail delivery routes. And you could, if you wanted to, set up a place to put packages there. Most people didn't because there was too much theft. And it was kind of a sport among the teenagers there to use baseball bats on post office boxes on the side of the road. But other than having our mailbox destroyed multiple times there, because that's what the locals did for fun, um, you could always get mail there. And I don't remember, we weren't using UPS and stuff at that time. No. We would just have a chip to the post office, but it was never a problem getting things. We also didn't live, although we lived out in the country, we didn't live so far from things that we couldn't go and get stuff that we needed. Out here, we're not that many miles off of major roads, but we're remote in terms of resources a lot of times. So yeah, our closest source of food is a family dollar. We're about done. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing lately. And uh, yeah, something else we didn't think about. I mean, just didn't ever consider when we moved here that, you know, I do see UPS once in a while come out here. And I know FedEx has come out here once for us. They weren't supposed to, by the way, but they did. And they tied a package to our gate 
with live plants in it. And if I hadn't happened to come home within a couple of hours, they would have been dead roasted plants because they put them in a plastic, clear plastic bag. So think about strapping a small greenhouse to your gate and leaving it in the full sun. Um, you know, I don't know what you have to do to be able to get them to come out, but I wouldn't ask them to come out because if we had a sudden rainstorm or snow or anything, the roads are impassable. So then what do they do with your stuff? Take it back to Flagstaff? That's where the, the closest uh, UPS station is, is Flagstaff. Depends on which way it's going. It's either yeah. Flagstaff or Prescott. Well, yeah, I guess there is one in Prescott too. So anyway, confusing. One of those things you don't think about, you know, we've, we've talked about where do you get your mail? Where do you get your packages? Woof, now we have another set of problems. <laughs> Hey, we'll work it out. It's just like in the middle of everything, you're sort of sitting there going, blink, blink, something else to deal with? Okay, sure, we'll make it work. But yeah, one of those things you don't think about when you have your little ring doorbell in suburbia. <laughs> Not too much suburbia around here. No, no, even even a town. I mean, nice, cute little houses on nice, cute little lots. No with, mail delivery. No mail delivery. Yeah, it's weird. So you are supposed to get a new post office, so that'll be that'll be nice. Yeah, say goodbye, Irene. Yeah. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because obviously we're going to be doing lots. <laughs> like finding out whether our packages ever really get here. Should it should be interesting. be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting, all right. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> yeah. Bye.